I am so honored. It was it was such a surprise. I wasn't even you know thinking anything about it. I had such a good time last year. I'm I am so sorry that I'm missing this event. I you know wish I had not already committed to something else before I knew about it. But I'm really looking forward to seeing all of you, certainly uh, at next year's uh, event and then also at various times in here. I've already made arrangements to have dinner at 21st Street and I'd love to do it at any of the other houses because I was involved with many of them as well. College Houses in general has managed to deal with the stresses that come to any organization through the recession and the various things that have happened and we've managed to keep it going and that's just really great and and pretty much it's been students all along I mean some help from community members but pretty much it's students from my perspective the skills that I got in organization and stuff were just really kind of amazing and then there's also the thing about the friendships you make in college are often some of the strongest you have. So certainly I would encourage everybody to cherish the friendships you have. And, and being in, in a, a co-op like College Houses enables you to be friends with groups of people so everybody knows everybody else, which I think is a very, that's a very rich kind of friendship group to have. And so I think you should cherish that and you should take advantage of, of learning about how to be effective in an organization because that's a very useful skill in many situations, certainly in work and you know, if you're in a church, if you're in environmental groups, whatever, if you, if you know how to make those sorts of things work, it's very pleasant. You can, you can make things happen. And I didn't really figure out about College House till during my sophomore year when I was living in an apartment and unhappy about that. That was really dull. But College House sounded great because it was this, uh, it was an intellectual community, a residential living experience, and they had cocktail parties with professors and you could talk to people about stuff. I was in Plan 2, so I knew a lot of those people. And so I thought that sounded really cool. So I applied and I heard that Mostly people didn't get in the first time they applied, so I was, you know, wondering if I would make it. And, you know, Mike McCone and I came the same year, and we were both wondering if we'd get in, but we did. And so it was just, you know, it was just one of the things that people kind of knew about, and they were right. It was a great place. <laughs> when I moved into College House in 1969, it was, uh, it was very, you know, a very dynamic functioning group. We had houses that a landlord leased us individually rooms in. But at that point in time, UT was growing very significantly, and so this whole West Campus area was prime for development. So people kept buying up the houses, the properties, and so, so that year in 1969, it was clear that those houses would all be torn down at the end of that year. So somebody had to figure out during that year what we were gonna do about the next year, and there was still a landlord who maybe was gonna lease houses to it, but anyway. So it turned out that summer, the group of us who was still around in the summer had to do some things and so the landlord found another house and so there were about a dozen of us, two were women, and uh, we moved the entire bunch. There were 70 some bedrooms full of stuff that had to be moved and the 10 of us did that and, uh, in July. And so, that was, so the second year it was still college house in pretty much the same form but in a different set of houses that were not nearly as attractive as the first set. It was also clear that those weren't going to last forever either. So through all of that, it became very clear something had to change. And Mike McCone was around then, and you know various ones of us would talk, and he figured out about that federal loan program that we wound up getting a loan for. And so he managed to, to pull it off that we got a loan. And in the meantime, we got the, the ARC, which had been a women's dorm. And, Women's dorms weren't as popular those days as they had been a little earlier, so they were hunting somebody to run it and we run that. There were a number of us around who were interested in keeping it going and Mike figured out the financial expertise and political expertise to make it happen. Well, I think if we had thought about it carefully, we would have been scared. <laughs> there wasn't really any choice because there weren't landlords who wanted to play that particular game anymore of leasing out individual rooms to people. For one thing, actually, the whole business about uh, men and women sharing rooms and sleeping together and stuff was sufficiently uh, controversial that, that landlord type people didn't want to be officially responsible for that. So people needed to take over. And so, you know, we just did it. It seems like most of us at that time, although maybe it was just the, you know, the dozen of us who were hanging around and doing this, we just assumed that if there was anything that needed to be figured out, we'd figure it out. 
and eh, more or less we did and actually now that I'm 40 years later and have the experience of adulthood, I think that that's what adulthood is. It's just, you know, you figure it out, whatever it is that needs to be done. And we just kind of got started a little earlier. Well, I certainly think that business of, of needing to figure out how to turn it into an ownership organization that was run by people of our age. I mean, we were 20 and 21 when we started doing this. That was really transformative because we learned that you know, there really wasn't much of anything that needed to be done that some of us couldn't figure out how to do. You know, we, we figured that out and and then you work together to do it. And and I was I was always just astounded by how wonderful it was to work with groups of students. And in later years I figured that this is this is definitely true because groups of students students are here to learn and to think about changing their lives and to figure out what's going on. And, and the students, there were always students who were interested in learning stuff and, and how you make decisions as a group and how you keep everybody reasonably happy with it. You are polite to people and all those sorts of things and you just, you figure out how to build consensus. And that's, I think that's a really transformative thing. And I think so much of what I learned here, you're never going to learn it in a classroom. You need to learn it in an experience and housing gives you one of the best experiences of that because you know you've got to live together. So you do have to get along. In my experience, that shift took, took place largely in the 1969 to 1970 school year, which was the year I moved in. Because at the beginning of that year, we still had quite a bit of professors coming over and giving talks or, you know, a reasonable amount of it. Not maybe as much as we'd had before, but at least once a week, maybe twice a week, and the cocktail party where a lot of the professors came. And by the end of that, that year, there was less of that. But that was the year there were a lot of demonstrations. There was a lot of, of worry about that. If I am remember, I'm, I'm almost sure I'm right about this. That was the year that the draft lottery started. So then all of a sudden, all these young men who were going to college with us you know, half or so of them knew, I'm going to be drafted as soon as I get out. And this was a big deal because, of course, there was a lot of question about the Vietnam War. So just the urgency to our lives of what was going on politically kind of overshadowed other things. And so it sort of turned like that. And, you know, if there were demonstrations, somebody had to be available to post bail for people if bail needed to be posted and things like that. So the organizing around those sorts of things. And I suppose that in a sense that had something to do with our willingness to take on the responsibility for leasing and everything. We have a community. We're not going to let this community evaporate just because the landlords aren't interested in renting us houses in the same form anymore. So we, we kind of had to take over. And we still had professors involved, but they were more peripheral. They would help us when, when asked, but we were running the show more. And then we also had decided from our experience at the ARC where everything, all the decision making had to happen after dinner, 10 minutes maximum. Nobody had the patience for more than 10 minutes. So we had decided that that was not the ideal. We really needed to have committees. We had started trying to have committees at the ARC, but it's always a little hard to superimpose that later. So we decided at 21st year, we gonna have committees. And everybody was gonna be on a committee. And so since there were 100 places for people, and really a committee shouldn't have more than 10, we needed 10 committees. So we thought up 10 things for committees to be. So you were the first trustee I was 21st Street. Um, why does 21st Street call their trustee a trustee and not a director like the other house? Because I didn't approve of anybody directing in the <laughs> co-op. <laughs> and I thought, you know, we're starting anew. There's no reason why we have to choose the director title. It implied that somebody was going to be responsible besides all of us. So I decided we would be a trustees. <laughs> I guess that the Board of College House had always had some sort of community members, which at the beginning had been the professors, but, but somehow in, in the time that it happened in here, there were still professors around, but there weren't really the sort who wanted to be on a board. And so Mike and I had certainly been involved at that point for a long time, so we were the community board members. And, and I've forgotten exactly when Mike got off. I got off in 86, and but that was about eight years of... Uh, of having a lot of fun and getting to know a lot of the people here, the board members, it was really a great time. <laughs> Cake or pie, right. Well, let's see. There's what I would answer about what I want to eat, but then I also want to say, in, in our day, it was do you serve liver or not? <laughs> Which was a very different time, obviously. And in our day, the compromise had to be, if you're gonna serve liver, you have to at least put hamburgers out there as, a, as one of the choices. 
I think I'd choose pie myself. 